I'm Dustin Ghost Hollywood. I'm Chris Hansen. And this is the Silver Linings Playlist, a podcast that tries to find the silver lining in some of cinema's most bleak endings. Uh, I, I didn't even look at it this time, the read, to make sure I got it right. <laughs> Every week. Uh, how you doing, Dustin? Oh, not good, since that's the second time we've had to record the intro. <laughs> All right. A little behind the scenes there. Um, so by the title, uh, this episode is Hard Candy. Uh, this is going to be an interesting one. Uh, I forgot One how word. I forgot how tense this movie is until I rewatched it last oh, night. Oh yeah, man! You if you don't sweat while watching this movie, you're a monster. Uh, if you if you're not familiar with us, we are the Silver Linings Playlist podcast. We take movies that have downer endings, uh, endings that are sad or fucked up or whatever you want to call it, and we try to find the good in the bad. Try to find a glimmer of hope at the end of it. This one was difficult. Keyword was try. Key- yeah. At least, for, okay, I have problems with this every week, let's be honest. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's not getting any we, easier, guys. Well, we, we reach sometimes. Oh, but yeah. Sometimes, oh, yeah. Sometimes there's movies that just don't give you, they don't lend themselves to finding a good, <laughs> the good and the bad. <laughs> but we try, and I think so far we're, we've been pretty firm. We're getting by. Yeah. We get by enough to, to call ourselves a real podcast, I think. <laughs> Um, again, this is, uh, what is this, episode six, Hard Candy. I've lost count, man. The year is 2005. Director is David Slade. You might know him from 30 Days of Night, uh, a few episodes of Hannibal, and Twilight? There it is. <laughs> Twilight Eclipse, I think. Yeah. Uh, the movie stars a young Patrick Wilson, and even younger Ellen Page, and Sandra O oh for about mm, two Ten minutes. Ten seconds, yeah. maybe. And uh, Patrick Wilson does not age. Nope. I like that you said he's young like God, Patrick Wilson because he looks the vampire. same now. <laughs> it's been 11 years. Looks exactly the same. Uh, the same movie, goes for Ellen Page, actually. Neither one yeah. of them age. This is a vampire movie. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the movie had a budget of less than a million dollars and grossed seven million worldwide. So they had a, not bad at yeah, all. seven times the return. Uh, it only holds a 68% on Rotten Tomatoes. And I say only because I feel like it should be higher. Yeah. Right? That... I feel like that's a ongoing trend. trend. We're in the 60s for most of these movies. Yeah. Um, it's that sad ending, I guess. Yeah. Or d- this movie it might just be the whole thing. The, <laughs> the whole, context yeah, of the it. content of the film itself. So if you're not familiar with the movie, let's take a listen to the trailer. It's a it's a bit of a lengthy one, but uh, you get a lot of, of clues about what the movie is about, kind of. We'll talk about it uh, after in we listen way. to it. like the kind of guy who has to meet girls over the internet. <laughs> well, I think it's better to meet people online first. Get to know what they're like inside. You work as a photographer, you find out real quick. People's faces lie. Does my face lie? <laughs> that is so good. Do you, do you want some? Sure. Oh. <laughs> mm. You look older than you are, and you certainly act older than you are. Really? Want to call your sister? Tell her where you'll be? Maybe later. I'm reading, um, Romeo and Juliet. It's a ninth grade book, but I figured I could have it done before the school year starts. Didn't know you are interested in that kind of thing. You thought since we've been chatting for three weeks that you knew everything about me? These were all shot here? My house is my studio. I recognize this girl. The things you do wrong, they haunt you. This is officially sick. I have never hurt anyone! It's just so easy to blame a kid. Who are you? My time is over. Now it's time to wake up. So the first thing I want to say about this trailer is 
uh, I think it's got amazing editing work. Agreed. Um, I like the whole touch of the blinds closing for the blurbs. I think that's pretty, pretty, that is really pretty neat. cool. Um, but I will say that it's kind of a bait and switch because the trailer makes you think bit. the little trailer bit. makes you think it's one thing, but the movie is a total opposite. <laughs> Uh, you get this kind of like cat and mouse thing in the movie where you think from the trailer where you think that uh, Patrick Wilson is kind of preying on this girl mm. and trying to kill her, but Re- not reverse that. Yeah, not at all. <laughs> uh, do you want to talk about anything before we start and discuss the movie? Are you ready to jump in? I say we jump in. I mean that. I'm here to talk about the movie, man. All right. Well, first things first, I'm going to say that I'm conflicted about this movie and where I stand. In what way? Well, we talked about this last night, uh, you know, before we recorded, but I'm not sure after rewatching this movie who I'm supposed to root for. <laughs> um, I mean, you're, yeah, I'm right there with you. Like, and I don't kind of go back and forth. Yeah, I don't think the movie makes it clear because. I mean, you obviously, just from the way the movie starts, you're supposed to, you know, think that Patrick Wilson is a scummy asshole or whatever. But as the movie goes on, I kind of feel for him. Well, and and I'm just going to speak on the casting for a second. Mm-hmm. Like, you want to hate that character, mm-hmm. but it's being played by Patrick Wilson. You cannot hate Patrick Wilson. It's, it's He's so damn charming. He's so good in everything. Um. It's something that's even kind of, insidious too it's, yeah some of the like behind the scenes about that uh is that david slade wanted him to be kind of this like looming creepy kind of typical pedophile and petra wilson said he wanted to play the opposite make him this charming guy so you would be conflicted yeah about it and it, i gotta say it fucking worked it for me it worked amazingly <sighs> well i guess we'll talk about it as we continue on through the movie but again i i want to put it right out there in the front I do not, I'm not defending pedophiles by any mean, <laughs> however, because I'm, again, I'm conflicted as to what I'm supposed to feel at the end of this it's movie. Just, this will be the final episode of this podcast God. because Dustin's getting arrested just, immediately. I, no, it's really, it's a sick thing the way this movie is, like the way it starts out, you know, it obviously there's no good can come from this, but I will say as the movie goes on, you start to realize that this dude is human after all. You're right. And I will say, and again, this is not defending pedophiles, but there has been studies, you know, where they they found that tumors can grow in the brains of these pedophiles. They make them want to do whatever it is they do and that it's removable and curable to some extent. And I, I swear to God, I know you're looking at me suspicious, but I've read stories about this and actual credible sources that being said, again, I'm not defending their actions. Did you read it on Wikipedia? Yeah, totally. God on WebMD. It. No, but <laughs> again, I don't know how to say it without sounding like I am. But again, yeah, you're you're digging I'm yourself digging into, into a hole. hole right now. I will say, I will just say that this movie does not make it clear who you're supposed to root for, and I'm not sure True. who the protagonist is by the end of the movie. Hey, I'm right. Th- hey, okay. When I watch Die Hard, I root for Hans Gruber, so I completely understand. I mean... He is the title character, after all. Just... A protagonist is, you know, it's their story, right? Yeah. So I'm not sure whose story this movie is. I would assume by the Uh, end, it's Ellen Page's story, which would make her the protagonist, right? But she's not likable, even if she's doing the right thing. Watch the director has actually said in interviews that it's actually Sandra O. Oh. It's her story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess we should talk about the specifics instead of vague generalities in case people haven't seen this movie. Yeah, let's Which, talk about the movie. Come on now. All right. That's why we're here, man. My, my first note is Lensman 319 and Thong Girl 14. Best <laughs> screen names of all time. Not only that, right on the nose. Lensman, camera, 319, we find out is got some significance later on. Thong girl, I don't take Ellen Page to be the type, at least in this movie, to be a thong girl. I don't really wanna yeah, I don't want to think about that. So I don't want to think about that because of the last thing I d- identify her 14. I'm assuming that's her age. Yeah. Right? So we start off this movie and there's kind of like this interaction. This Weird, We're seeing like a computer screen. Chat. Yeah. This movie is like... Dated. Chris Hansen's <laughs> wet dream. It's so... Realized. Like, when's the last time you were in a chat room? If ever. <laughs> AOL days, maybe? Uh, hold up. Dude, I still remember the interface for AOL. Oh, like, yeah. Uh, oh, yes. For our that younger listeners, times. AOL was this platform, this social media platform, long before Facebook 
and oh, MySpace. I, dude, if if we could get rid of Facebook and bring back AIM. A, AIM. Oh, man. Oh, in a heartbeat, AIM sir. Was great. AIM is still going, surprisingly. I know some professors Seriously? on campus that still use AIM. New best that's friends. The, that's their preferred contact method. <laughs> That's incredible. So, yeah, again, this movie starts off um, with this interaction. Basically, these two are flirting back and forth together, and they decide they're going to actually meet in person. Uh, Lens Man 319, obviously, being Patrick Wilson, and Thong Girl 14 being Ellen Page. <laughs> I'm glad we cleared that up yeah. because that could have gotten Patrick really Wilson confusing really easily. He might be pretty sexy in a thong. It's going to be a weird episode. Let's so, uh, my other note is uh, that's right after this is John Mayer equals sophistication. Apparently, because that's accurate. Because they accurate. these characters meet in a coffee shop, um, and uh, Patrick Wilson is talking about uh, Ellen Page's character Haley and how she's different than other girls and she's more mature. She listens to John Mayer, which that kind of set up a red flag for me. I was like, I don't know if that counts. You're not a, you're not a Mayer fan. No, I, I didn't say that. I'm not really. I, but got, a, I got a John Mayer tour shirt like ten feet away from us right now. <laughs> no, I didn't say that. I just don't think it equals sophistication. I'm, I will go get it. I swear I mean, to God. Maybe if she's listening to I don't know if I can know Elton John or something. I don't know, because what young teenage girls listen to Elton John? So, hey, some say John Mayer's the Elton John of our, our generation. generation. Okay. No one Not says me. that. No Not one. Okay. Yeah, I was completely lying. No um, one says that. So they're sitting down, they're having this interaction, which I gotta say, Patrick Wilson has no fear, because his first interaction with, with Haley, uh, what's, what is uh, Patrick Wilson's character's name? Um, it's a great I know Ellen Page question. is Haley. God, we should really know that. John, um, John, Jeff, 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 Jeff. Okay, it's Jeff. You look it up. No, I'm just guessing. Okay, but I'm pretty sure it's Jeff. Okay, well, we're gonna call him Jeff until one of us confirms it. Either way, um, the first interaction that Jeff has with Haley is Haley is eating like chocolate tiramisu, and you know she says you should try some, and he takes like a sampling off of her lips and puts it in his mouth. It's Jeff. It's re- it is Jeff. It's re- uncomfortable especially because they're in broad daylight it's clear that he is at least 30 and she's probably no more than 16 uh, uh years of age so it's like he has no fear being right out in the middle in front of this uh barista who's serving her i don't know i just felt it was like do you are no, really no. ballsy i mean obviously he's a bold dude <laughs> um so yeah you get this creepy vibe right off the bat but you know ellen page's character is eating it up they have a discussion, you know, talking about how they met and how she's much more different. She's different than older girls. But I got to say, he's, he's, it's funny because he says, you don't look like girls your age. You're more mature than girls your age. But she's sporting like this really like 10 year old boy, almost bowl yeah. cut kind of look. It's not yeah, she flattering. Is. But I did find out that she, the reason this is because she had shaved her head for a movie before this and she didn't have time to grow her hair out. Uh, what movie does she have a shaved head? A movie in? called Mouth to Mouth, which when you pair that with Hard Candy is oh man, yeah. Anyway, uh, I think, yeah, I don't think I've ever seen her in anything before this. Uh, I haven't either. Because so, Ella, I always think of Ella Page as like oh well, the no, girl from Hard Candy. Wasn't she, uh, no wait, that was was she, she wasn't Panic Room, was she? That was Kristen Stewart. Kristen Stewart. Ah, Twilight. God damn it. Anyways, um. So they, they decide that they're going to go back to Jeff's house. Uh, they go out. And for some reason, he parked really far away from... I noticed that every single time. But you know what? That's actually the the parking lot for the Arclight Cinema. That's the parking lot for that, which is where the movie premiered. Oh. Which is interesting. But um, huh. so he's, he's got his only car in the parking lot. He's driving this Mini Cooper. Uh, she's, she, she makes some comment. Uh, and he says, oh, is, should I be worshiping you or something? And she goes, yeah, you should worship me. And there's this really uncomfortable scene where Patrick Wilson gives into it, and he gets the first down a- of many yeah. uncomfortable. Act- that's not even the first uncomfortable scene. That's just- oh no, yeah, the first uncomfortable scene is the opening scene. Yeah, <laughs> with the chat. Um, but yeah, he gets down on his knees and literally like kisses her feet, and it's just- she's wearing this, this. I'm weird about feet. Me too. I, I don't. I don't leave, like just it. leave them alone. Yeah, they don't. We're stop we're it. the anti Tarantinos over here. Um, she's wearing like this red hood, which we will get into this red hoodie. We'll get into it at the, in the trivia section. Cause there's some stuff to talk about, but she's wearing this red hoodie. Uh, and he's in like this suit for the most part. Uh, and they hop in their mini Cooper and they head off to his house. That's pretty far away. I guess I'm guessing this is like LA and, uh, yeah, it, I assume it looks like California to me. 
So they they drive out to his his remote house. And uh, this is where I know they we go inside the of Jeff's house, and I gotta notice this movie's got a lot of cool colors. When we start off, a lot of pastels. Uh, it's not very saturated. And as the movie goes on, and it gets more and more tense, the colors start to come out. Yeah. Um. So they're in the house. Haley is excited because she's you know in this guy's house. She's looking around. And it's a really cool house. It's very modern. It is a really nice house. Very nice house. This is actually based on blueprints of the director's house, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Really? Yeah. So it's a really nice house. He's got, you know, photos up of all these models he's taking photos of. Uh, Got the the island in the kitchen with all his alcohol and everything. Um, He shows her around, you know, shows her his studio. The rock bed. Yeah, the rock, the rock uh, bed, the bed of rocks. Um, He shows her around the house, shows her his studio, his camera, all that stuff. And they start drinking, so they start making screwdrivers, and you know, so they. She keeps saying, you know, you're not keeping up. She's drinking more. Uh, I'm drinking more than you. That kind of thing. Uh, and she asks, you know, I want to be a model. Will you take pictures of me? And this is where it gets even. You don't think it can get much like more uncomfortable, but oh, it does. But it does because you know they start drinking drinks. She asks him to take pictures of her. She immediately starts doing like a strip tease kind of thing to like this loud disco music. Well, not disco music, techno music. Yeah, that's playing, uh, and it's just I don't. It, oh yeah, I forgot to mention they make they made a comment about Goldfrap, the yeah. artist Goldfrap, which I'm not familiar with them. Maybe you are. Uh, I think they're like a, a, a house band. It's a she. It's a house if band. Right? Serves. Wait, no, like an electro house thing. Maybe. Pop? Uh, dude, it's been years. I don't know. I don't know, but Haley's got. It was a... big around the time of this movie. Yeah, she said she's she's you know got a an affiliation. No, I think it's like a woman like solo I think it is thing. too. But anyways, what that, it's, that's a shared interest matter. they have, and you know Jeff makes a comment that he went to her the concert and it was great, but, but whatever. Uh, so yeah, she uh, starts doing this little strip tease so this loud techno music, and Jeff starts to feel a little dizzy while he's trying to take photos. You know, he even keeps saying, you know, don't do that strip tease bullshit you know show me the real you kind of thing yeah and the camera switches to like some super high shutter speeds i want to say probably like a 45 degree angle maybe and it's just really choppy really you know it's disorienting and he passes out and this is one of the first of many 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 times we're gonna cut to black many times yeah that does happen a lot so and I don't think I ever noticed it until this, this time. Rewatch, yeah. So Jeff wakes up, and he is strapped to a chair. Uh, I want to say he's maybe like duct taped to the chair, maybe or something like that. Uh, Cellophane. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Um, and Haley, uh, you know, is, is like, you know, I didn't think you would wake up. I never gave somebody that much. Turns out she drugged the screwdriver that he was drinking. And Pedro Wilson, first thing he says, he makes a really weird comment. That's why I don't let 14-year-olds make my drinks for me. Yeah. Oh, that's a good point because she makes a comment. He goes to offer her a drink and she says, you know, we were told don't let anybody give you a drink that you haven't made yourself. And he kind of falls for that because he lets her make him a drink. Turns out it was drugged. But he makes a comment after waking up. Practice what you preach. Yeah, for real. Practice safety with drink. Yeah, first of all, don't, don't be a pedophile. That's number one. Yeah, that's, that's um, the relevant number part. Number two, make your own drinks. But no, he wakes up and he makes this weird comment, which is ad-libbed by, by Patrick Wilson, saying, you know, why do I get tied up first? Insinuating that if there is some <laughs> sexual thing going on, <laughs> I don't know. It's makes it it's an even more cut-to-the-bone, creepy, chilling kind of thing. Uh, but here's where Haley does a 180, and she's no longer this sweet, innocent little six, uh, 14-year-old no, she girl. She goes 0 to 100 real fucking she quick. She basically confronts him and says, look, you're a pedophile, and you're sick. You shouldn't invite kids back to your house. You shouldn't give them alcohol. If you if a kid wants alcohol, you take it away from them. You don't encourage it, that kind of thing. Uh, he screams for help. And this is... a. Again, I wrote this down in bold as even more high shutter speeds because <laughs> I, I realize this movie does this when there's not a whole lot of action going on. They use this tool. They cut to these higher shutter speeds to make it seem like it's more action oriented. Yeah. All it is is Patrick Wilson who starts his chair, starts screaming out to help, uh, screaming out for help. And Haley sprays him with like, I guess, Windex or something in his mouth to like basically yeah. cut his cut his voice. But it's this real quick scene, and they use like eight different angles in like four seconds, and they make it super high shutter speed, so it seems like it's super action oriented. 
Anyways. Which, I mean, it's it's effective. Yeah. They just do it a lot. So, you know, Haley's basically saying, you know, I'm going to look around your house. I know you've got porn or whatever of these young girls that you've been taking photos of. And this is where you start to kind of... I guess maybe he's just convincing. I guess that's what it is. He's a convincing, charming character. Jeff is basically like, look, I don't, I'm don't. i not a pedophile. You know, I might have crossed the line bringing you back here. He's like, but all these people that I take photos of, all these girls, they're fully clothed. You know, I have their permission. I shoot them here. They go off. Nothing's ever happened. And not only that, I also do photos of nature. You, you know, you can go look at all these photos. I've been to the plains of Utah. I've been to this and this. And uh, Haley makes a comment saying, you know, what, just because you're, you're, you take photos, you're a nice guy, thus you must not be a pedophile or something like that. So it's kind of this back and forth game where he's trying to convince her he's not a pedophile and she's not convinced at one bit. So she rummages through his house looking for stuff. She finds a gun under his bed and, oh man, so this rock bed that he has. Uh, it's fucking rock bed, dude. It's basically like uh, a hole in the middle of his living room that's got a bed of rocks in it and... What's uh, not, it's raised up from the floor, isn't it? Yeah, I, I think it might be raised up, but what happens is Haley realizes there's probably something in this, this bed of rocks that he's hiding. So she moves these rocks out of the way and turns out there's a safe in there that's embedded well, in the ground. And I love that little, like, she walks by and she's like, wait. Yeah. She kind of looks She's down. done rummage through the whole house yeah. and then we get, like, this bird's eye view of her stopping and turning and seeing the bed of rocks. Uh, so yeah, she sees this safe and she starts, uh, you know, trying to guess the, the passcode for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and t- the whole, this whole thing comes down to the fact that some girl apparently went missing recently. Yeah. Yeah. And Can't, what was her, n- uh, Donna Maurer. That's what it was. And Haley thinks that Jeff had something to do with it. Jeff. Cause apparently Jeff has, has photos of her that, yeah. you know, he took as a model, uh, for her as a model. And, you know, he's like, you know, I never did anything. You know, I, we took photos and that was it. Well, Haley manages to get this safe open by using the combination of March 19th, yep. which is, you know, Jeff's online screen name, Lensman319, and apparently has something to do with a year that he met uh, this woman, Janelle, who he has, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. a fascination with, and he's, like, obsessed with. Uh, anyway, so he opens the safe, she opens the safe, and inside Wait. he's got... Is Janelle his, like, girlfriend? No, she's not his girlfriend. It's a girl he tried to have a thing with, and she turned him down. And he has, oh, all, okay, okay, he has okay. all these email correspondences back and forth right, where he's trying right. to convince her. And she's like, you know, you have to stop. Whatever. Okay. Uh, so she opens the safe, and inside there's a couple of things. There's a CD that literally just has the word stuff written on it. Take with that what you will. We, don't, we never see what's on it. Yeah. Uh, and he's got a photo of Janelle. Along with some other photos that we don't see, but Haley makes a comment saying that it's some truly sick shit. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Uh, somehow, uh, there's a reason they were in the safe in the rock. Oh yeah, in for the, sure. The middle of the house. Um, somehow Petra Wilson gets the jump on her. Uh, wheels himself into the bedroom, gets the gun. Uh, tries to find Haley so he can shoot her, and she, you know, asphyxiates him with a plastic bag until he passes out. Just another, re- another uh, cut to black, and again, even more high shutter speeds. Oh yes. <laughs> uh, so it cuts to black. Oh, yes. This time we wake up. And oh god. This is. Oh, if god. you know anything about this movie, you know this scene. Or if you've heard about this movie, you you've definitely heard, heard about, about this. this. Scene. So we wake. Uh, Jeff wakes up and he is strapped. It's really to, hot in here all of a sudden. Yeah, he's strapped to this table, uh, and he has been, you know, depantsed from the waist down. He's completely naked, mm-hmm. with a bag of ice over his private area, and he is strapped to the table by his wrist and his legs, so he can't go anywhere. Haley has somehow. <laughs> I guess she brought him with her in her backpack. Has uh, changed into some scrubs. She had everything in that bag. She had everything apparently. ready to like, go. She was ready to go. Or maybe he had scrubs. We don't know. That uh, bit her. No, why he <laughs> So There's I'm I'm not making yeah, pedophile okay. jokes during this episode. Keep yeah. going. So Haley basically tells him, Look, I'm gonna castrate you so you can't hurt little girls anymore. Okay. Yeah. Uh he tries to talk her out of it. He's like, like no matter how you feel about Patrick Wilson's character at this point, you don't. Every want dude this. watching this movie is like, no, don't, don't do that, don't. And this don't. Is like, kind that's of the weird thing. That, I, mean, it, 
Punch wonder, him in the throat or something. Don't do that. <laughs> I wonder if this is like a case study you could do where by this point in the movie, let's say you have four groups you, or three groups. Let's say okay. you have a group of all men, okay, a group of all women, okay, and a group that's mixed half and half. Oh, God. Let's say we get to this point in the film. What do you think the men are thinking? Like, I think you kind of said it. Like, we... They're like, do anything but that. Like, you... Like, he's obviously... Shoot him in the face. That's fine. Leave that part Whether alone. you think he's a pedophile or not, do you support this idea of castrating him? Because I don't. I think I mean, turn him into the police. Definitely or... want to see it because it's entertaining. Well, let's say this. But... Let's say this. Because we can't. Comp- There's no way we can okay. identify okay. as a victim this, of pedophilia. This is, this is guys. Oh God, that's my worst nightmare. Yeah. This is women. He's a man. Kill him. That's like that whole thing where like that uh, that story about the man that cheated on his wife, so she cut his. I dick apologize off. to all feminists. <laughs> She cut his dick off and threw it in the garbage disposal. Yeah. And, you know, when all the women cheered and applauded. But if that was reversed, you know, it's a weird... There's a blur, a line there that's blurred. And it's, you know, I don't condone cutting off anything from anybody. In theory, you would turn them into the police. but Right. And, and then imp- they would cast her. In an imperfect or, world, wait. you know, vigilante I don't justice. Know what police do anymore. Vigilante justice, whatever. Either way, I think... I, Batman never castrated anyone. Yeah, it's true. I think in in the group, the control group of mixing the hat men and women half and half, I think it leans more towards the men where the women would kind of, I'm, this, I'm just speculating, but I have a feeling in a group environment that the women would kind of think like, no, don't, don't do this. Yeah. Because again, at this point in the movie, you're, you're led to believe he is the protagonist. Oh yeah, there's... There's no switch yet. Well, wait. I mean, for the most part, like he, there's been no literal evidence that he is a pedophile or that he's murdered this donna mauer character we, only ha- we do only have her word and it, and this movie is very ambiguous where you don't get facts like he's obviously like a creep he's, he's, he's definitely kind of, a creep he's definitely a creepy dude but we don't actually know that he's done anything he's a really charming uh nice creep is the way of saying it. like he's de- he's clearly crossed the line but i don't know if he's crossed the line so far like into it's pedophilia. implied that like the stuff in the safe was something but we're not we, we we're literally not shown or told what but it he hasn't done anything, anything yet that we've seen concrete right. evidence to suggest like it, he should be castrated until proven guilty for the most part yeah and Haley is in this case judge jury executioner yes so you're you're led to not like this character and i have to say i don't like this character anyway because i think she's a little too two-dimensional i think yeah. she's a little too preachy a little too condescending and i just think she's too those two those things she's too mature or preach whatever you want to call it for her age to be dictating what is and what isn't fair in terms of this castration thing and i just found her character i i, I used to love this movie because i loved her character and now upon this rewatch i just think her character is not likable even though she's doing this thing that i'm sure most victims of pedophilia would love to see happen yeah, no for sure i just don't think her character wouldn't well, no, i think like, you root for her mm-hmm but you don't really like like her, if that makes sense. I guess. And that's what I'm saying. I'm conflicted about who I'm supposed to root for in this movie. Oh, no. Yeah, completely. Uh, there's a joke here about, you know, uh, huh, huh. J- yeah, joke in this movie, uh, which I kind of find weird because I, I, another one of my notes saying this movie has no humor, like at all. Not really. But there's this little joke. Like, even the things that are, like, that you know are supposed to be like the don't comedic land. reliefs like you don't it's not even that they don't land it's like i'm too uncomfortable to laugh right yeah now. yeah uh she ma- he makes a joke you know saying uh he says something like you know i i'm a good guy i swear i'm a good guy i, I take these photos you know I, I had one screw up i crossed the line and she makes a joke saying yeah and roman polanski just won the oscar for best picture or something i <laughs> thought it was pretty funny i love that joke so much so here's the thing uh Haley, so many people probably don't get that. No, one, yeah, which is Haley. <laughs> Haley's basically getting him ready. She's using a pack of ice to numb him. Uh, she's done. Sh- she's shaving his private area. Yeah, uh, getting ready to do it. Uh, and he starts telling the story. I guess because he's so hysterical, because uh, about what's about to happen to him. He starts telling the story about uh, how he was younger and he had this cousin. Uh, and I can't remember her cousin's name, but the cousin would basically, she was a little girl. They were both probably on like six to eight. Uh, she would play this quote unquote game where after she got out of the bath, while she, before she dried off, she was still soaking wet. She would tackle him while she was naked and tickle him until, you know, what some little weird kids game that they yeah, think is yeah. pretty innocent. Uh, he said he was over at his aunt's house, which is a little girl's house. And she tried playing this game one time and the aunt came in, saw what was happening 
and uh, sent the little girl away to get you know dressed. Yep. And took him to the stove, turned the stove on, and basically lifted him up and basically held him above the stove, above the burner. God. Yeah. And, you know, he said, you know, I was crying. It hurt so bad that my tears hit the burner and I could hear him popping and sizzling. Basically just mutilating this little kid. Uh, and he said that after his mom came, picked him up, he never saw his aunt again or his yeah. uh, cousin. This is all going on while Haley is getting ready to castrate him, getting the scalpel and the, you know, the getting herself sterilized and everything. Um, but she is unmoved. She's unempathetic to this whole story, and uh, so begins the castration scene. And I gotta say, this scene is—I remember this movie because of the scene, obviously. I gotta say, this scene is a lot more relaxed than I remember. The fuck it is? The actual physical castration, not the... Oh. Not yeah. the build-up well, or yeah, anything. It's, yeah, it's not the actual, like, castration part that's really... It's literally the tension building yeah. to it. Yeah, you're, like, on edge and uncomfortable, this whole thing. But when the actual castration happens, it's pretty relaxed. There's no music. There's no real sound. You kind of hear, like, some cuttings. Oh, and we forgot sounds. to mention there's a video screen that he can oh, see. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. Haley is this masochist or the sadist where she has set up a camera to record the procedure and a monitor for him to watch. She makes a comment, you know, I wouldn't go through all this setup and, you know, not let you watch it. VTR setup, man. She's legit. Anyways, so this castration happens. We can't even get that sometimes. She takes out one testicle and makes a comment saying, you know, I can't leave you with just one. You'll be unbalanced the rest of your life, which is supposed to be a joke. And again, it doesn't land to this, this moment because you're just like horrified at what's happening. But she does that and then she takes the other one out. Like, I understand that. She, like, I understand that the character is making a joke. But I am at this point in the movie, I'm like, I can't laugh right yeah. now at anything. Yeah, it's like making an airplane joke on September 11th. It's just you can't. Well, but, no, um, I mean like the September. I'm not comparing the two. I'm just saying the the similarities in how you can't laugh because of the moment. I don't want to laugh at somebody only having one testicle when I'm watching a man being mutilated. You're right. So I'm not a very moral person. <laughs> so so. She takes the other one so out. Anyway, and, this castration scene, man. And now uh, he is half a man. Yeah. So, to add insult to injury, she suggests she's going to throw his testicles out the window. But then she decides she's going to drop them in the garbage disposal. Oh. And here's another Ooh. joke she makes where she says, you know, she drops them down the garbage disposal. And she goes, you know, huh, I guess they weren't brass. I kind of laughed at that, but at the same time, I'm like, I should not be laughing at this. This man has just been tortured. This this is way too uncomfortable. But this is where we go back to high shutter speeds uh, because Haley decides she's going to go take a shower and leave him there basically to to sit and wait. Um, Something we forgot to mention, too, is right before this castration scene happens, the doorbell rings uh, because... uh, Jeff's neighbor, Sandra O's character, happened to see Haley mm-hmm. uh, and decided to come over. So she comes over, and there's this kind of will she, won't she moment, know what's going on. Uh, you know, she Haley is disjointed because she didn't expect someone to be there. Right. Uh, Sandra O's character, you know, asks her, can she babysit for her sometime? She tries to sell her cookies. And the whole time Haley is, you know, uncomfortable. She, she can't deal with anything. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. No, this happens later. Because this is the part where Sandra O's character happens to see her on the roof because Haley is checking to make sure no one's around. I know. I'm sorry. I got this backwards. Anyway. Wait, we, you just confused me. Yeah. I, I'll, I'll clean it up in a second. You'll know what I'm talking about. Back to the castration scene. The castration scene happens. Haley goes and takes a shower. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah Jeff yeah. manages to escape uh, and sits up. And reach, of course, looks down. We don't get to see what happened exactly what he's looking at, but he obviously looks down at his crotch and begins laughing and makes a comment. I'm I'm all here, mm-hmm. implying the castration didn't happen. Yep. Uh, he takes the takes the the camera and you know looks because it's hooked up to the TV and pops out. Uh, open the VCR. Turns out Haley brought 
uh, basically how-to medical video of castrations happening. So basically what he was seeing was just some how-to video of a castration and not exactly him himself. Yep. So he's still there. Uh, he goes around the house. He picks Which up wouldn't a... Wouldn't you think you would recognize your own penis? Not only that, but I by the fact that I could immediately sit up without any anesthesia, like antibiotics or anything, yeah. I would be like, okay, good. Nothing's really There's going on. bag of ice... I'm sorry, that's not going to do a whole lot. No. Um, he grabs this, this kitchen knife and begins looking around the house for Haley. And again, back to high shutter speeds. Yep. Goes to the shower, whips open the curtain, and she's not in there, even though the water's running. Uh, she sneaks in behind him. Gotcha, bitch. And tases him in the shower, which I'm going to say, tasing sucks. Being tased while you're wet oh, has got shit. to be god awful. <laughs> yeah, that could not have been awesome. And we cut to black again. Uh, of course. So we wake, uh, we we go back to the next scene, and Haley is walking around the house, and my question is, why is she doing this? She's cleaning her fingerprints from the scene. However, fingerprints left at a crime scene only really matters if you're in the database of the police for the most part, right? Yeah. So, so I don't know why she needs feels the need to clean. Me. Yeah. But anyways, she's cleaning up the house. She's putting things back where they were, and. Uh, she makes she finds his laptop and types in the types in like a Microsoft Word document says, tried to shoot myself, can't even do that right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so uh Jeff is crawling on the floor with this knife still trying to get to Haley, and mm-hmm. she tases him again. And again, we cut to black. And I gotta say, this time he's passed out. This is the third time's the charm. Oh yeah. This, this is the third dude, time he's are just in and out of this. Yeah, he's movie. he's constantly like in and out of consciousness. So he wakes up and he is in a noose uh, in the kitchen. His, you know, he's on standing on a chair. Haley has rigged this noose up uh, to hang him, and she's about to hang him, but then uh, the doorbell rings, and this is the scene I was talking about with Sandro's character. Sandro rings the doorbell. Haley comes out. Uh, they have a discussion. You know, Haley is uncomfortable and you know trying to hurry up and get back into the house. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, she's got a pedophile hanging yeah. by a rope in the kitchen. Exactly. So, Sandro is like... We've all been there. Yeah. We know how this story goes. <laughs> Sandro o has these cookies she's selling. Haley runs inside because she doesn't have enough money. Takes money out of Jeff's pocket. Pays for the cookies. Which is kind of insult to injury. He, that's his money. And he doesn't even get the cookies. And oh, yeah. <laughs> so, Man, I, she... Should, let's get cookies. Sandra O knows something's up. But she can't, you know, quite pin it. Uh, Let's talk about this pedophile movie, then get some cookies. Yeah, Continue. Haley. He, Haley apparently makes a comment that there was a leak in the house, and that's why she is wet yeah. from the, I guess, the incident in the shower. Yeah. Uh, they go back in, and <laughs> Patrick Wilson and Soldier saying a leak. Really, that's the best you can do. Basically, insinuating Sandra is going eventually going to figure out something's coming up, and she's going to find her. Even if she does kill him, she'll find out that Haley was there, and she'll know who to look for. Yeah. I mean, I think, he's not wrong. No, that he's was not. A pretty shoddy uh, improv on her part. And I will say, although you want Sandra O's character to be the savior in this movie, her character is so annoying. Did you feel that too? Yeah, like, I was like, good so, Lord. she's being the nosy neighbor kind of thing. But it's like you want her to to rescue Jeff, but at the same time, you're like, just go away. I mean, you're such an annoying <laughs> neighbor. Um, my note here is okay. So Jeff is in this news, <laughs> standing in this chair, but his his legs are not tied. His arms are tied, and his and his, he's always in the news. He is she is within kicking distance, and out of spite, even if I knew that doing this would end up me being choking to death, I would just flat out drop kick this little girl in the face. Because well, <laughs> I mean, again, he's in the wrong, but you're still <clears throat> supposed to root for this character. We don't know what his lower body strength is like. That's he a good might point. Skip leg day. However, he manages to do something similar is uh and also i wrote down you know kick in the face wait a minute am i defending a pedophile i wrote that down yeah, in my no, notes that it literally says that on um he does something similar he basically uses his legs to choke her and yeah. uh gets her around the neck you know he's he's dangling there we call that the sonia blade oh yeah the sonia, i was actually sonia thinking blade. that he does the sonia blade starts choking her out she escapes and takes off running because he has slipped out of his noose uh he gets free and again goes for the kitchen knife and uh, you know, starts. To see he's no. He's like, he's done. He's done trying to reason with this girl. He's been pleading this whole movie, telling her, "Look, I'm not the guy. I didn't do anything to Donna, uh, Donna Maurer. Uh, you know, I'm not a pedophile. Whatever." 
He's been playing this whole movie, and it's convincing. And like you know what you know what the catalyst for this change was hmm. that she didn't offer him any cookies. Goddamn cookies, man! It's all of it. All boils down to those cookies. So she is, she starts running around the house and runs outside and tries to escape, and uh, eventually ends up on the roof. Meanwhile, Patrick Wilson is looking around the house for her with his knife, and all of a sudden he start, he just snaps and he's like, "You're driving me crazy!" And then he starts making a comment. You're just like her. You're all just like her. And he starts just stabbing this photo on the wall. losing it. And this is where you kind of start to understand, okay, maybe Haley's telling the truth because he makes this comment, you're just like her, implying Donna Maurer, and yep. saying you're all just like her, implying all these girls uh, that he has taken photos of. So this is where it starts to bend. You're like, who am I supposed to be rooting for? Is he telling the truth? Is he not telling the truth? Is Haley telling the truth? Who really did whatever to Donna Maurer, but... Eventually, he he still snapped. He's still in the snapping phase, but he makes a comment saying, "You know, this is who I am. Thank you for helping me see it." To himself, you know, he's yep. talking to himself. He's crazy at this point. So it's and he's got this knife in his hand. So it's we'll talk about it in the trivia section, yeah, but it's yeah, like, yeah. okay, what is going on here? Um, he he finds Haley on the roof. They have a confrontation. She has the gun. Uh, she points out and she basically says, "I emailed Janelle." Telling her to come. Uh, and if she comes, she's going to see all this, you know, the photos of her you have of her. She's going to see yep. what's in the safe. She's going to know you're, a, you know, a creep and whatever. She snitched. She did. And she's like, you're going to be caught as a pedophile, all this stuff. And uh, she's like, all you have to do is basically hang yourself. She's rigged a noose around this chimney and saying, all you have to do is put the noose around your neck, jump off the, off the roof, and uh, I'll... You know, tell her, you know, everything's fine. You're you're a good guy, all this stuff. I'll clean up all this stuff downstairs. You know, she'll never even know you're a pedophile. You're, she'll never know anything. And he's resisting. He's like, no, I'm not who you think I am, whatever. Uh, and it turns out this is, again, ambiguity. You don't know because he makes a comment. He's like, you know, I'll find you, whatever. Someone will find you. She's like, you know, how do you even know my name's really Haley and all this other stuff. And so it's like, you don't know throughout this whole movie who's telling the truth and who's not yep. and this just adds on to it and uh, uh janelle shows up to the house you can hear her, uh you know down in the front yard calling out looking for jeff and they're on the roof and jeff's freaking out scared that she's going to see him up there uh he makes a comment to Haley saying you know about donna mauer he said he mm-hmm. says uh i didn't do it i just watched yeah so it's implied and took pictures apparently i wanted to take pictures but aaron who is i guess his assistant or his uh you know counterpart said no so it's implied here that while jeff might not be a pedophile he's certainly an accomplice to murder uh saying that aaron was the one who killed her he just watched you know and then Haley makes a comment that says you know it's funny is that aaron said the same uh said that you did it and he just watched so this is implies is a very important question. This is implying that Haley has already got to Aaron and has killed him as well, or forced him to kill himself. Whatever you want to consider, we'll talk about this at the end of the movie. But so Jeff is like, "All right, fine, I will kill myself." So he puts the noose around his neck, and there's this beautiful shot, this wide shot of him on the roof as a silhouette with Haley there, the background of Los Angeles behind him, and it's in super <sighs> slow mo. So good. He puts the noose around his neck and he takes, you know, he's about to take a step off and Haley says, don't worry, I'll tell Janelle everything, you know, I'll tell her you're innocent, all this stuff. Jeff, in slow motion, you know, takes a step, jumps off the the roof, the rope tightens up, and you hear his body <laughs> slam to the side of the house and Haley picks over the side to make sure he's dead and makes the comment, or not. Dang. Which is again, which is again, it's like, do I root for this character? What do I do? I am so conflicted. I don't know. <laughs> so, I, the movie there's ends. There's only one character I root for in this entire movie. Right after this scene, the movie ends with Haley packing up her stuff and leaving. We never see her talk to Janelle. We never see anything else. We never see Patrick's body, uh, Patrick Wilson's body. We just end with her walking and escaping into the woods and cut to black. That's it. Yeah. And that red hoodie. So, whew, we have a lot to talk about. Uh, I guess let's talk about the Donna Maurer thing first. Do you think he did it? Do you think he's telling the truth that 
Uh, he just watched. I mean, there's no way of knowing. There is no way of knowing. And there's there's so little like evidence provided. It's all hearsay that it's hard to even pick a side. I think he's telling the truth. I think he just took photos. Um, we'll talk about in the trivia section with the director things. I think he might have just been there wanting to take photos. He was an accomplice to killing this girl. I think Aaron really did do it. But then again, I don't know. I'm not basing that on anything other than just speculation. Yeah. Do you think Haley actually got to Aaron and actually killed him? She did something to him. Do you think she was online flirting to him as well as she was with Patrick Wilson at the beginning of the movie? Uh, she might not have necessarily gone about it the same way, but I definitely think she did. What do you think They've happens? They've had an interaction. What do you think happens after? Do you think this like goes on the news? You know, pedophile hang self. Uh, this whole thing with Donna Maurer comes to fruition. What do you think Janelle Janelle does? Do you think? How does that affect her, do you think? Oh, Janelle is like... I mean, she's probably relieved on a certain... She's probably devastated she plane, didn't like, go to the cops. And yeah. Because then... it's like... Like, you know, if you were... Well, I guess they weren't technically dating, but like if someone in your life was revealed to be like this monster... Yeah. You'd have a big like, holy shit, I've been hanging out with that guy. Yeah, or I know that guy, you know. Yeah. All right, so I guess let's talk about some trivia before we get to the silver lining. Um, due to the controversial nature of the film, the budget was kept under a million dollars, so that the studio wouldn't have uh, wouldn't asked to change anything. They wouldn't have much, you know, makes sense reason to change things if they're only losing a million dollars. This next one I didn't know. The word, the expression "hard candy" is actually apparently slang that pedophiles use on the internet for an underage, underage. girl, huh. which I guess makes sense because you know. It's, Candy is alluring, but hard candy, you know. Okay, this next one I was aware of, but I still call bullshit. I do too. On the second part, like, so come we, on. Yeah, we talked about Haley's red hoodie. Yeah. Uh, apparently, That's, it's like the iconic thing. There's two things everyone knows about this movie. The poster. <laughs> Someone gets a dick cut off, kind of, and the red, she wears a red sweater. The red riding hood poster. Uh, apparently, this this red hoodie was actually orange, and the color was changed to post production. I kind of buy that. No, that I can. But what I believe. don't buy this is this next part because both the cast and the crew members have said that uh, Haley wearing the red hoodie is not supposed to be in reference to Little Red Riding Hood. I don't buy that at all. I I mean, why else? A red hoodie instantly you think Little Red Riding Hood, and then, yeah, yeah. Why would you change it from orange to red if it wasn't that big of a deal? You know what I mean? Uh, Patrick Wilson briefly passed out during to uh, during the uh, castration scene due to overexertion. Uh, that I completely believe. I believe too. He said he's, he was on the table. He's, he's getting real. You can see in, in a lot of the scene. shots on the table that his hands have turned purple and blue, and that's not makeup. They said the robes were really that tight. Oh no, shit! And that's why he passed out because he's just overexerted like losing and losing and blood. Shit? Yeah, damn. Uh, when they were filming the scene that where Haley implies that uh, everything Jeff thinks he knows about her is a lie, the producers asked if they can if uh, they can include a line where she reveals that she's actually 18 years old and not 14. Uh, everyone, in, uh, Ellen Page and Patrick Wilson both said that you know they were adamantly adamantly against that because it kind of undermines the whole premise of the film. You know, she's really 18 and yeah, not 14. That, He's not really a pedophile, and it, it undermines. Like the whole I don't thing. know why. Like I, I don't really think I can explain why, but that would have taken. It would a have lot yeah, out of the film. Undermining the film is 100 percent what would have happened. Uh, the final shot of Haley uh, with the hoodie pulled up over her head was taken by the DP without Ellen Page even knowing. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, she said she was just kind of hanging around set, and that she didn't even know that shot was being uh, being taken huh. until she saw the final cut of the movie. It's a great shot too. Yeah, it's a good shot. That's D- awesome. During an interview panel for the film, the director revealed that Jeff was telling the truth that he did not commit the crime Haley accused him of. So I'm Shit, assuming, never mind. So I'm assuming he's saying that, yeah, Jeff did not kill Donna Maurer. He might have but been he was involved. Def- like but he had to have. Like, he was definitely there, involved in some way. But he's, he, he also could just be saying that he was involved to try and convince Haley, you know, whatever it is she thinks, so she'll let him go. You know, it could, uh, it could just yeah, be like, yeah, true. yeah, I did rob that bank, you know, just to say whatever. You know what I mean? Like a making making a murder or It's kind of like that whole bad cop, good cop thing where, like, after a bad cop deals with you so long, you start thinking, shit, maybe I did do that. Yeah, true. Um, 
Patrick Wilson, uh, this is stuff that's oh, not on. This is what you were talking about. Yeah, earlier. this is not on IMDb actually. But yeah, Patrick Wilson remembered reading the script and felt that most of the dialogue that Jeff delivers is dark or menacing, and the actor wanted to make it take it in another direction to make his character likable. Uh, he knows difficult. He said that the the difficulty of being positive when you're doing such dark things was like that makes it really difficult. Uh, you know, it's it's hard to to be charming when you're doing such creepy, you know, creepy shit. Uh. Right before the first blackout, when Jeff is taking pictures of Haley and, and uh, trying to fight you know, fight from passing out, uh, he, he yells at her to sit down for, for, a, for a second. And according to Wilson, the shot where he screams at her has been digitally altered. I didn't notice this, but uh, they said that uh, Director Slade stretched his mouth out a little wider in, uh, I in post. I believe that because something about that has always kind of creeped me out. Him yelling at her, yeah. And that like stretch his mouth out a little wider to make him look more it. of a monster so huh uh despite the amount of Learned dialogue and speeches in the film page doesn't consider the movie to be uh, a preachy one uh her okay. and wilson agree that you don't learn enough about either of the characters or what actually happens for it to be considered preachy which i still don't agree with i still think yeah your character- it's a little heavy-handed. It's her, yeah, her character is a again too, not defending pedophiles. No, I just think her character is a little too preachy. This yeah. whole movie because almost every line she says is either a quip or it's like a speech she has prepared or something. It's just, I don't know. Uh, and lastly, yeah, we talked about this. Wilson, uh, Patrick Wilson, blacked out briefly while laying on the table um, when he's trying to get his hands loose. That's a lot crazy. of a lot of the scenes, you you know, his hands are blue or purple, and that's because the ropes were holding him so tight. So, and uh, apparently Pat, uh, Ellen Page says she never saw Patrick Wilson's uh, dick. That the scene was like tastefully done where she didn't have to see anything. And because at the time, I believe she was only 17. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. She was young as shit. When they, she wasn't 14, but yeah, still young as shit. All right. So, that is the movie. So, the, we're here to do our jobs. We got to oh, find it. Oh, Lord. Mallard. We got to find the silver lining in this. I... Good luck. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to go first? Do you want me to? Um, yours is already on here, so go ahead. All right. So whether or not the characters are telling the truth or not, whether or not Jeff did have involvement with Donna Mao or not, I think the fact that Haley gets away and even makes this comment about she's already got to Aaron or if she's going to get to Aaron, one of those two were definitely involved with this girl going missing. Yeah, for sure. Right. So I think at the end of the day... Jeff hanging himself, uh, even if he wasn't, you know, the primary suspect, he was at least someone involved. I think there's some there's some justice for Donna Maurer. Oh yeah, and this for is sure. where that bait and switch happens. You know, when he makes that confession, I'm like, okay, now I'm kind of rooting for Haley here. Yeah. Um, and then it kind of flips again when she says or not. You know, I kind of you go wishy washy, but I think either way, he still has some kind of involvement. And whether or not Haley did get to Aaron. Uh, I think there's still some justice for Donna Maurer. So that's my silver lining is whether or not he's a pedophile, he's still creepy, he's still crossed the line, he still had some involvement with some little yeah. girl's murder, so she at least got some justice. All right, that's a pretty solid That's one. what I got. Um, mine's going to be more character-specific for Janelle, like I was talking about earlier. Mm-hmm. Like, because she was unknowingly associating with a monster. So at least, like, while it probably sucks for her, like, finding out... Like, assuming the information comes out, like, finding out what he actually was, Mm -hmm. like, at least, you know, now he's been removed from the situation, and... Yeah, no matter if he's guilty or not... Kind of makes it safer for everyone around, especially her. Yeah, no matter if he's guilty or not, apparently the sick photos that he had in his his safe can't be good, so something's getting out. Again, we never see him, but it's strongly implied... <clears throat> that they're not of anything awesome. So, no, he's not going to have a good reputation in death, apparently. Yeah. Like, his obituary is not no, going to be a final one. Screwed. Okay. <clears throat> That's a bleak as fucked up movie. Um, do we have some alternatives? Uh, movies similar in plot or, you know, subject that we can suggest to people that's a, a pick me up, something that's not as heavy handed, that's a little more light? Uh-huh. I mean, we can't really go with similar in plot because there's not a lot. There's not a lot of pedophile movies in general, and there's certainly not any. No, com- not happy pedophile, no happy pedophile movies. movies. Uh, I got something kind of. Um, it's also about an older gentleman and a younger girl uh, that have a kind of relationship, and it's 
not really a, it's not a pedophilic one but i will say it's a movie called god bless america uh if you haven't seen it it's like a comedy action movie uh, a little bit of drama but it's about this guy who basically just go, says you know what i'm sick of all the douchebags in the world i'm gonna go around and i'm just gonna kill anyone that's being an asshole <laughs> and he develops this relationship i want to say it's strictly platonic with this like 16 year old okay. girl who also wants to do the same thing and they start going on this killing spree and it's again it's a comedy it's really fun if you haven't seen it i might be on netflix i don't know but it's a really fun movie i would definitely watch that after watching hard candy to pick pick yourself back up uh all right i'm gonna stick with my man patrick wilson here okay uh, we were talking about this earlier i'm gonna throw out the a-team remake <sighs> Because Patrick Wilson <laughs> rocks that shit, dude. That's probably the only good part of that movie. You shut your <laughs> mouth. I was you know who directed awful. that? I do, and I can't remember. Smoking Joe Carnahan. Oh, that's right. That's It's just not a good script. It's just well, not, you're not it's, wrong. It's a really bland wrong. script. You're not wrong. But that is definitely a pick-me-up coming from Hard Candy. Yeah, you need happiness. And again... I was originally just going to say any other Patrick Wilson movie, mm-hmm. and then I remembered such films as Little Children. Oh, Little... That actually is a pedophile movie, but don't watch that one as a pick-me-up, because that's worse. <laughs> they say all his other movies are, you know, Kind of dark, yeah. <laughs> Con- yeah, just all Conjuring horror movies. And, is, and you know, Watchmen and... Yeah. Oh, Watchmen's a good one, but that's... Patrick a- Wilson, do happier movies, man. Watchmen comes do, up on this podcast Do a, a comedy lot. or something. Um... So, clue for next week's episode. All right. For next week, that's kind of a tough one. Let's go. Don't fraternize with your coworkers. <laughs> no good could come from it. Nope. Uh, it's going to be a good one next week, for sure. I'm already stressed out about it. All right. So, thank you, everybody, for listening. Uh, please, since you're already there, please subscribe on iTunes. Give us a feedback. Give us a rating. Uh, you can like us on Facebook. Just search Silver Linings Playlist. Uh, like our page. Give us some suggestions if you have any for I movies. I love the suggestions. Yeah, the suggestions that we've got have been pretty good. Yeah, for sure. And a lot of them are ones we already planned on doing anyway. So There's, there's been a few in there where I was like, oh. Yeah. Oh, ones I didn't think about. Yeah. Uh, yeah, if you have a suggestion, drop us a, a message on our Facebook page. Or let us know a movie you want to see uh, that has uh, th- to be reviewed that has a downer ending. Uh, and I think that's it for this week, right? Do you have any other, anything else you want to talk about? Or, uh, I mean, no? just the usual thing, man. All right. So thank you for listening, everybody. And as, as always, always, Excelsior. Excelsior.